Hey reefers, welcome back. Okay, so today, before we touch on our topic, I just want to give a, another shout out to one of the Facebook uh, groups that I belong to. It was the 31st of October, I got a private message from uh, Jolene, um, that's the wife of Mark, and they are the admin of um, Reef Euphoria, I think it's Beginners and Advanced, and they said I'm a winner of their sticker pack. And literally, while I was setting up to record, my postman shouted at the gate, and he had this envelope. And in this envelope is the sticker pack from them. So I'm going to do a little enveloping. Yeah, so I'm quite impressed with it because, I mean, I'm all the way here in SA, and they are based in Canada. And they sent this through to me. And, you know, they do this all on their own. And I see it's a, a thing with the, the Facebook groups that are, are sort of like, they're linked to each other and they do these sticker packs, which is quite cool. I mean, you know, it just shows their appreciation for, for the reefers. And there's quite a few. I mean, there's, there's uh, Saltwood Aquarium Reef Keeping. I belong to them as well. Uh, Mark's Reef, I must go check them out. Uh, Maritime Aquatics, uh, Aquatics and more. Tank Talk with Tina, I still need to catch your, your, when you go live, it's always too late for me normally, but I must try and catch one. Um, there we go, there's Reef Euphoria's um, sticker. And R-E-B-A, that's quite a very, that's a cool sticker. This is very cool. Thanks guys, and yeah, it's a nice little letter and everything, it's really cool. Like I said again, thanks a mole. I really do appreciate it, and I appreciate the effort you guys took to send it all the way out to me. Um, yeah, so let's get started on our topic. The reason I've decided to talk about the topic today on evaporation in an aquarium is I get this so often in my store and we think it's common knowledge about evaporation and how to deal with it in a marine aquarium. I mean, most of us that have been in this hobby for a long time, it's, it is like, okay, well, we know exactly what to do. But I've been getting a lot of newbies coming into store asking me to check their salinity. So gladly pull out the refractometer and test their salinity and I'll get a result of 1.0, for example, this is the range that I would test when I find these issues, 1.0, 3.0, all the way up to 1.035. And the first question I ask the, the person is, how old is the aquarium? And what do you top up with? And every single time I get, I'm topping up with salt water. And yes, I understand this is a saltwater aquarium and we use salt water to, for everything to live in. But when you top up a marine aquarium, you always top it up with RODR water. So it is fresh water, not containing salt. When we have evaporation in an aquarium, only fresh water will evaporate. And it will be distilled water. With the evaporation, it leaves every other component behind. So as the water evaporates, your salinity will start to increase. If you top up with salt water at 1025, all you're doing is, yes, it will drop the salinity slightly for that addition of 1025 if your tank is 1027 for example but as evaporation carries on your salinity creeps up so all you're doing is topping up with salt water evaporation occurs and your salinity just keeps climbing and keeps climbing and keeps climbing fortunately most fish build up a tolerance for the high salinity to a certain point because it happens very slowly but you will get to a certain point where you'll have a total failure fish will start dying and you'll basically create the create the dead sea okay so when we deal with evaporation we top up our tanks 
with RODR. That will bring our salinity back down to our set, our set salinity. If it's 1023, 1024, 1025, 1026, whatever your, your goal is on your aquarium and what type of aquarium you're keeping, you have a mark in your sump at your point where your tank will always be filled. If you don't have a, if you don't have a, a, a ATO, automatic top off, um, then your salinity will stay balanced. Okay, so further into evaporation, when you're dealing with seasons, one season will produce higher evaporation than another season. Like for us here in SA, our winter months are our dry months and our summer months are our wet months. So when you are dealing with humidity, that is how much moisture there is in the air already. So like for example, us here in Durban, our salinity and, uh, sorry, our salinity, listen to me, pardon me. Our, our humidity in Durban in the summer months can be anywhere between 70 to 85%. Now that means the air is saturated to that percentage, meaning that that's how much moisture there is in the air. So it's not leaving a lot of room for evaporation from your aquarium. Yes, your aquarium will still evaporate water and you'll still lose water, but you'll find you'll lose more water in the drier months as your, I keep talking about salinity, as your humidity in those months is lower so that means there's more space in the air or the atmosphere to absorb more water as it evaporates so for example here in the winter months our evaporation is quite high and then in the summer we run air cons to cool all our systems down rather than a chiller in each system and that there dries the air out so that for us there's not much of a major difference between our evaporation in winter and summer. And also depends on your home as well. Are you running air cons? Because that will affect your evaporation in your aquarium. Now just look at it at, at this in this way. If you take a sponge and the sponge is dry and you put it over a puddle of water. If the sponge has a big enough volume to absorb all the water that is that in that puddle, it will absorb it all. Now, if the sponge volume and the water volume are equal, but the sponge is already 50% saturated with water, it will only be able to absorb 50% of that puddle. So the atmosphere and the humidity work in the same way. The more humid it is, the lower, the lower your evaporation will be if it's not being affected by an outside source like an air conditioner. So just bear in mind that a certain time of the year, you're going to have different um, volumes of evaporation. So when it comes to, for example, dosing Kalkwasser with the Kalk stirrer, you're going to have fluctuations of evaporation, meaning you're going to have fluctuations of addition to Kalkwasser to your aquarium. That's, that would help someone a little bit more than a beginner stage on understanding on how dosing Kalkwasser would work. Um, sometimes if you are relying on that, you will find certain months it would be harder to get the right amount into your aquarium as it was prior where the evaporation was higher and your auto top up was working harder. So please guys, just remember, it, because it's a marine aquarium, it doesn't mean we top up with salt water. We top up with RODR, which is a freshwater source and we do water changes with salt water. We strive to keep our salinity at our set range and we try not to go divert from that range. If you set your tank at 1025, for example, our goal is to keep it steady at 1025. Adding an auto top off that will click off at the right height on your sump. So when you have evaporation, it automatically adds in the, the RODR to adjust your salinity or, or maintain your salinity, then perfect. Just bear in mind, if you add too much fresh water, you will drop your salinity. If you add salt water for evaporation, then you're going to um, increase your salinity. 
If you want to increase your salinity because you've had a drop somewhere along the line and you don't know what happened and you want to do it slowly, then top up your aquarium with salt water at 1025 or whatever your set amount is until your tank balances off and then go back to RO water. That method has helped me quite a few times. I didn't check before to see if my refractometer was calibrated and I was actually throwing in 102, I think it was 1022. Yeah, it wasn't a big deal, but it was quite a big water change. So it did take my tank down from 1025. I think I, think I came down to 1024 like I said it's not a big deal and all I did was the next time I topped up I just topped up with salt water and balanced the tank back to 1025. Yeah and like I said as well you know be part of a community that was my last video if you missed that check it out and you know you can always ask the questions there. I would suggest one piece of equipment when you do start an aquarium off is a reliable salinity tester. Ideally a refractometer it's readily available and it is very accurate you just need to check it every now and again and make sure it is still calibrated yes calibrating it with solution of 1025 is ideal but if you don't have it calibrating it to 1.000 with with RO water is still acceptable as it will still give you a reading it might be 0.001 out but it's still going to give you stability and your salinity so if you are in doubt no, just check it make sure it's on the one mark if it's not on the one mark on the refractometer itself there is a little screw inside there the refractometer comes with a, a flat screwdriver that fits in there and you turn that screw and you'll see the line move and you line it up with the one you line it up with the one with RODR water that is recalibrated. When you check your tank, it should read whatever your salinity in your tank is. Yes, a lot of guys say ideally 1025 to calibrate them, but I've done a test myself with 1025 solution as well as RO water, and both if I calibrated this with RO water and I put the 1025 solution on and checked it. I was getting 1025. So if you don't have 1025 solution, RODR water does work for recalibrating your, your refractometer. And I do suggest as a beginner reefer, it is, it is a nice piece of equipment to have so you always know that your salinity is correct. Salinity is important to the stability of aquarium. Guys, thanks for watching and happy reefing.